So I am here today to review two books which I loved, so I'm super excited about this. These two. The first one is The Obelisk Gate, which I was sent for review. It's written by N.K. Jemisin and it's the second one in the Broken Earth trilogy, I believe it is going to be. This one is Hope and Red by John Scobron. This one I wasn't sent, I bought myself, but it is also published by Orbit. And this is book one in the Empire of Storms series trilogy, whatever it is in the end, I don't know. So. Let's start off with Hope and Red. Hope and Red is a story that I didn't know much about when I picked up the book. I just knew it was published by Orbit. It was a new author that they were pushing. I'd seen it a lot on social media and I was like, it sounds interesting. I definitely want to try it out. It was described as a kind of sword and sorcery-esque series and it says on the front, if you like Brent Weeks, you're like this. I definitely can see why they've likened this to Brent Weeks. I do think if you like the Night Angel series by him, then you're probably going to like this. I would say it's more in line with the Night Angel series than it is with the Lightbringer series, so just bear that in mind. But I will say that I think that the likeness is a good one and the writing styles between those two authors are similar. John Scovron is the author of various different YA books. I've not read any of them, but I know he's written some others. This is his first sort of foray into adult fantasy writing. I will say that this feels like a bridge between the two. I would say this definitely has YA themes but it's done in an adult way a lot of the time. So it feels very fast paced, even though it's a chunky book, it was a super quick read. I read this with Michael and both of us agreed that it was a super, super quick read. This is a story that follows two main characters. Those characters are Hope and Red, of course. Hope is a young lady who survives a horrible massacre in her local village. It's kind of a village that no one really comes to. And one day people do and everyone in the village except her is massacred. She happens to be out exploring and she just manages to escape without even really knowing. She comes back to find pretty much everyone she's ever known in her whole entire life dead. It's not a nice situation for her. She then gets taken in by some traders who come along and they take her to a monastery where they drop her off because they don't know what to do with a young girl who's just been left after her whole family's been massacred. What, what do you do in that situation? So they take her to a monastery hoping that the monks there will train her or look after her or counsel her, something like that. And that is exactly what happens. She grows up in this monastery and when she's there, one of the leaders of the monks actually starts to realise that she has a lot more potential and if she were trained, she would be quite the force to be reckoned with so he starts to train her up and she basically has a really interesting upbringing from that point onwards. We then follow Red who is a thief in a town. He lives in the slums, he actually comes from a fairly well-off family but his mother kind of disconnected from that family because she found love with someone who wasn't really of the right caliber and so he comes from a family that is very wealthy but he's never known the wealthy side of it. He's only really known the sort of hard life that his mother and father had by choice because of the love that they had for each other. When his family dies he ends up kind of becoming a street boy, he doesn't really know what else to do with himself and he becomes a thief and when he is out thieving he kind of attracts a lot of attention from some of the older prostitutes and people in the town. Um, one in particular takes him under her wing and he helps her to do something so they kind of band up and become really good friends and she kind of helps him after that and what I really liked about this is it's quite a chunky book but it doesn't read like a slow read at all. It really feels like a very modern, very quick read. You definitely have the sort of banter of sword and sorcery but you don't have that until later on. At first it is two kind of coming of age stories. The thing that's different about John Scovron's approach is he really skips a lot of the montage moments. He kind of gives you an overview of the training moments that we normally see most fantasy writers spending a whole book on. So if you imagine that we follow these children from when they are quite young children up to the age where they're pretty much adults, all of that is in this book. Normally that would probably be spread over like two, three books. In this one, it's all in this one. So we have quite choppy scenes where we see that they're about to start training and then we see them, oh, now they've learned all this stuff. It's been two years. Oh, now it's another three years and something new has happened. So we're basically getting like a highlight reel of their lives, which I was really happy with because, and Michael, I think, agreed with me, both of us have read a lot of fantasy and although I do love the training sequences, I find them really fun if they're done well, they're all a bit 
the same a lot of the time. So for a book to take the approach of kind of skipping those sections, I was quite happy for it to do that. As a whole, I would say that this is more of a adventure pirate sword and sorcery than it is anything else, which is great. I was definitely looking for that sort of thing, a very fast, very fun, witty and charming book when I started this and that's exactly what it gave me. I'm super intrigued about where it's going to go in the next one. I'm sure it's going to be fascinating. So I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars overall. If you're looking for a really light, exciting, fun, fast paced, really enjoyable read in fantasy, I would say this is super easy, especially if you read a lot of YA and you kind of want to bridge that gap between YA to adult fantasy. This is a fantastic book for that, so certainly try this out if you haven't. It came out very recently, I think it came out in June, so it's quite a new release, but I would highly, highly recommend getting your hands on this one and checking it out. Moving on now to The Obelisk Gate, which is by N.K. Jemisin. This one is the second one in the Broken Earth series. I have done a full review of the fifth season, which is the first one, so I will link that one and you can go check that out if you want. But The Obelisk Gate is a fantastic continuation. I was kind of left feeling a bit worried when I finished the fifth season, I'd say, because I, I really, really loved it and it really surprised me. There were a few moments where I thought, mm, maybe it's going to be a three stars, like it's good, but it's nothing great. And then it just, it turned everything around in the second half of that book. So I was blown away by it and I think I ended up giving it a 4.5. I was a little worried by the events of that book, how she was going to continue the story. Because in book one, we have three different points of view and they're all female and they're all doing different things, kind of adventuring around the world. In this book, I thought she's probably not going to choose the same points of view. She's probably going to switch things up. And that is what she did in this book. In book number one, we have a character where it's told in the second person. And she does continue this into book number two as well. So I know that that was one of the major complaints a lot of people had with book one was kind of adapting to the second person narrative because it is a little bit jarring at times. I think in this book it worked a lot quicker and a lot better for me because I was expecting it. The first book I wasn't. It's not something that's done that often in fantasy. In this book we're following the same character, which is Essen, and we're seeing from her point of view as though we are her. Now this is a great tool once you get used to it because it means that you're sitting in her story, you are experiencing it, the characters are talking directly to you, you are the one making the action choices and doing the events within this book. So it's a really interesting tool and I love that about N.K. Jemisin that she's willing to sort of take risks with her stories and do things that maybe other authors would shy away from. Definitely felt a closer connection to Essen as a character because of that viewpoint choice. The other character that we're following is Nassan, who is actually the daughter of Essen. I know lots of uh, similar sounding names, so <laughs> bear with me. But Nassan is kind of traveling with her father, and we actually see her a lot more in this book. We've heard about her in book one, but we don't see her really. Book two, we follow her point of view on everything that happens up to where book one ends and past that point. We know in book one that she has been taken by her father, and that is part of the mystery that Essen is going after her daughter. In book two, we see Nassan's point of view and we see why her father took her, where they went, what his aim was, what her aim was. She's quite a young child when we first pick up her narrative. And then as we follow it all the way through, she becomes an adult. She starts to see the things in this world a lot clearer. She starts to really kind of understand that maybe her father's motives are not that great and don't actually line up with her own. Maybe she needs to start making choices for herself. I just really enjoyed her as a character. Character. I think I connected with her probably the most except for Essen because I already knew her but out of the new characters or the characters whose viewpoints we're seeing for the first time in this book I think she was definitely my favourite. I just thought that she handled herself pretty well and she kind of had this training, this instinct that made her do a lot of things right the first time but not in a patronising way, in a way that it's like common sense. Like you need to be sensible when you've got crazy powers and she has and Essen has so both of them are sensible characters and I like that a lot. The other main character that we follow in this book is called Shafa and we have seen him before he is a guardian. Guardians are not really regarded as particularly nice in this world they basically try and restrain people who have magic who have origin which is the magic of this world 
they are kind of people who are just like enforcers. They kind of reprimand people who use magic in very nasty ways. If you are an Origini out in the world, you are expected to have a guardian with you to make sure you don't do anything, basically, that they don't want you to do. He's an interesting character to get under the skin of. I can't say I like him as a character because of his actions up till this point. I do think he changes heart a little bit in this book because of things that have happened to him and he kind of starts to take on a much nicer personality but he still has his moments where I just despise who he is and what he stands for. Talking about the magic in this world, one of the things that confused me a little bit in the first book was learning how the magic worked. It is quite a complex magic system, there seems to be a lot of stuff that you can do when you have Origini, so it's something that you have to kind of wrap your brain around. Essentially what it is, is basically being able to manipulate earth and sort of elementals in various ways, mostly earth based, but there are other things that you can kind of do, like cooling things to ice and stuff like that. So it's a really interesting set of powers and everyone kind of has their own limitations and their own um, abilities. Not that many people in the world have powers but in this book we're following a community of people who do have powers and a lot of our main characters are either very heavily associated with those people or have the powers themselves so in this book as opposed to book one we see a lot of magic use and we definitely start to understand the potential and also the stresses and worries that this magic can bring to people. So I really enjoy getting to know the magic system a lot more. I also like that we kind of opened up the world a little bit and we start to see how these science fiction elements that were very much hinted at at the end of book one really start coming into play in book two. In book one, I initially thought it was a fantasy book, like a solid fantasy book. By the end of book one, I was questioning that and saying, is this a fantasy? Is it science fiction? Is it a little bit of both? In book two, I would say it's definitely both. I think the science fiction elements that we get told about and the different elements to the story that we get told about are really cool, really, really interesting. Not quite what I was expecting, but like I like how it went so I'm definitely definitely intrigued about how the third one is going to go I know that it's a long way off because this one only comes out in like a week or so I am super excited to sort of see how she wraps this whole series up because it just has gone really really well in book two and I was very pleasantly surprised by how she handled this book compared to book one and what she did with that so in the end I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars, I did still like book number 1 more but I think that's because there is a massive twist in book 1 that I just didn't see coming, whereas this one doesn't really have like a major twist that's like mind blowing. It is a solidly fantastic story though, I really enjoyed the story, really enjoyed the continuation and I can't wait to pick up book number 3 in a year or so whenever it comes out, very excited for that. Again, 4 out of 5 stars for this one, and 4 out of 5 stars for this one. Two fantastic titles from Orbit. This one was sent to me, this one I bought myself. Orbit are one of my favourite publishers. If you guys have never read any of their stuff, I would say just go and pick something up by them. You can count on it almost always being good, or at least in my opinion, they're almost always good. I would hugely recommend both of these. I'd love to know in the comments down below which one you are more excited for, or whether you've pre-ordered this one, or whether you've picked up Hope and Red. Both are, as I say, really, really great reads. Thank you so much to Orbit for sending this one to me. I cannot wait for more in both of these series, and I will chat to you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.